G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. It is April 4th, 2023, and today we are going to be reviewing and testing the long-awaited Lime SDR Mini 2 from Lime Microsystems. But first, I'll give you a quick rundown on the history of this project. Lime Microsystems was founded in England back in the year of 2005. Their early hardware designs pioneered the concept of field programmable RF transceivers, creating some of the first commercially available products based on this emerging technology at the time. But what this company is mainly known for in recent times is its range of affordable, full duplex, transmit capable software defined radios. In the mid 2010s, after a few years after the breakthrough discovery of cheap SDR dongles based on USB digital TV receivers, transmit capable software defined radios were making the transition from exorbitantly expensive research grade laboratory equipment to somewhat affordable consumer grade USB peripherals that could be used on a home computer. The Hack RF was a pioneer of the affordable, in double quotes, transmit capable SDRs as well as the Blade RF, but these software-defined radios were still considered to be outrageously expensive by SDR enthusiasts who were accustomed to the $25 RTL SDR. On February 22nd, 2016, the original Lime SDR was announced and the hardware was shown off at the Mobile World Congress 2016 in Barcelona, Spain. With a price of $289, full Duplex transmit capable software defined radios became affordable in the blink of an eye. Perhaps still considered to be outside the price range of a typical SDR enthusiast or ham radio operator, some good news blessed followers of the project on September 18th, 2017, where it was announced that a smaller, less capable, and much cheaper version of the Lime SDR had begun funding on crowd supply, and it was named the Lime SDR Mini. The Lime SDR Mini became a fan favourite among the SDR enthusiast community due to its full duplex and transmit capable nature. The main selling point for most was the outrageously cheap price of $99 for early backers on crowd supply and for the remainder of the sales only $124 US dollars. On the 8th of March 2022 it was announced that the Lime SDR Mini was being discontinued due to difficulties in sourcing components like the Intel Max 10 FPGA. It was claimed that this was a result of the global chip shortage. In the same end of life statement indicating the death of the Lime SDR Mini, a successor called the Lime SDR Mini 2 was announced. Appearing to be identical in specifications to the first Lime SDR Mini, the only difference was the addition of an upgraded FPGA chip, the Lattice ECP5. The new FPGA chip has 44,000 logic gates compared to the Intel Max 10s of 16,000. On the 30th of June 2022, it was announced via Crowd Supply that the Lime SDR Mini 2 had reached its funding goal and a shipping date of October 2022 was expected. However, this deadline proved to be a little too ambitious and it was announced on the Myriad RF blog with a post dated the 27th of January 2023 that the project backers have begun receiving their Lime SDR Mini 2s. I received mine here in Australia on the 16th of March after ordering it on January the 10th. Shipping did take quite a while but that was to be expected because I ordered mine fairly late. I guess all the early backers of the project got their orders fulfilled before I did and that's completely fair enough. So that should be enough on the history of these things. Let's go ahead and review the hardware. I'll skip going through the specifications because the original Mini and the Mini 2 are identical except for the upgraded FPGA chip. So here we go. The black colored foam lined flip case the Mini 2 is sitting on currently is the enclosure that it is shipped in. This was contained inside an anti-static bag so that is really nice. And what you see here is exactly what you get when you open the shipping box. The actual board is quite small in size. Here is the obligatory beer can for size comparison. So as you can see, very small. It has a USB type A mail port on the front and it is blue colored on the inside of the connector indicating that this is a USB 3 port. 
At the opposite end of the board, we have two SMA female RF connectors, one for transmit and the other for receive. The large aluminium component is the RF transceiver chip. I really like the fact that this is shielded. That's a very nice feature that hopefully this should increase performance by minimizing RF interference. The larger of the two IC style components is the Lattice ECP5 FPGA and the smaller component over near the USB port is the FTDI USB controller. There are various other surface mount components scattered around this side of the board. We also have a couple of expansion ports, I guess you could call them. Uh, over here we have the connector for installing an active cooling solution. At the, over here at the top we have the FPGA JTAG interface. And finally down the bottom here we have the EGPIO connectors here. Flipping it over now, there are various other surface mount components dotted across the board. The only noteworthy thing to mention is probably the external clock reference input and output connectors located here. I'm unsure of what connectors these are, but they appear to be really tiny MMCX-like ports. Maybe high rows UFL connectors, potentially? So that'll conclude the hardware review. So let's talk software now. Software support, in my experience, has been good so far. I've primarily been using my Lime SDR Mini 2 on Dragon OS Linux, playing around with cellular base stations using Osmo NITB scripts. This SDR is advertised as a drop-in replacement for the original Lime SDR Mini, and the Osmo BTS software GSM stack works exactly as it should with the Mini 2. Windows support is okay, but not great which is typical for software-defined radios aimed at the professional market. My favorite Windows-based SDR software is SDR Sharp, and I tried for about 15 minutes to get it working with the Lime SDR front-end plugin, but this was unsuccessful. I then attempted to use it with, the SDR, uh, with SDR Console on Windows, which worked for receiving a strong local FM broadcast station. Having Windows support is nice, but Linux is where the real power of this device can be unlocked. So what are some of the negative aspects of the Lime SDR Mini 2? I need to be careful about how I explain the following because it's only my opinion, but this thing here is what I like to call a professional grade software defined radio. For example, the RTL SDR is a consumer grade software defined radio because it comes in a nice metal enclosure. It has firm SMA bulkhead connectors that can cope with a lot of antenna swapping cycles and potentially heavy coaxial feed lines or antennas. The USB connectors on the RTO SDR are quite rigid and it can support the weight of a dongle while it's mounted horizontally out of a PC's USB port. Windows support for these devices is generally good and these types of SDRs are almost plug and play aside for, from driver installation procedures. The Lime SDR2 Mini, on the other hand, is a professional grade software defined radio as it ships as a board only with no enclosure. Often end users of these types of SDRs have the resources to design and 3D print an enclosure in their lab or a test environment. Care should be taken when handling the board as static discharge from your hands or fingers could potentially damage it. The SMA RF connector ports are soldered directly onto the board as opposed to having rigid bulkhead RF connectors supporting the weight of coaxial feed lines or antennas. So care must be taken when attaching or detaching antennas or coaxial cable otherwise the solder joints could potentially be damaged or dislodged. The same can be said for the USB connector. It is only soldered onto the board and I doubt it could support the weight of the board two coaxial patch cables or two antennas while plugged directly into a PC's USB port. I definitely recommend using a USB type A extension lead for the Lime SDR Mini 2 and care should also be taken when plugging in and unplugging your USB patch cables as to not damage the USB solder joints. 
I do have another slight dissatisfaction with the Lime SDR Mini 2. Not so much the product itself. This is really good, but more so a touch of misleading advertisement regarding how this SDR is advertised as a drop-in replacement for the original Lime SDR Mini. Software-wise, I truly believe that this is the case after some preliminary experimentation. Hardware-wise, it is not. I purchased a Lime AC Mini case with my order from Crowd Supply. And I can confirm that this enclosure will not fit a Lime SDR Mini 2. One of the ICs on the underside of the board is preventing this case from fitting correctly. So I'll just switch over to the browser now. As you can see on the page for, as you can see, this is the page on Crowd Supply for the Lime AC Mini case archived on the Wayback Machine on the 30th of January 2023, about two weeks after I placed the order for the Mini 2. If I do a Control F find for the text Mini 2, there is absolutely no reference to it aside from the link to the Crowd Supply project for the Mini 2. So now, if I switch to this second tab, this is the same page as retrieved today while I was preparing to make this video. Can we see the main difference now? It has finally been amended to indicate that this case will not fit the Lime SDR Mini 2. The text reads, this case is not compatible with Lime SDR Mini 2, with the word not capitalized, for good reason too. Honestly, an email would have been nice advising me that this enclosure wouldn't fit the SDR I am buying in the same transaction. But oh well, it's partly my fault also. I should have done more research. And I'm not pinning 100% of the blame on crowd supply, but marketing material for the Lime SDR Mini 2 should not say it is a drop-in replacement, in my opinion. I've managed to make some kind of use out of this enclosure anyway. Maybe I could modify it to fit at a later time, or I might just wait until the pre-made acrylic or 3D printed enclosures begin to flood eBay. The final negative thing I'll say about the Mini 2 is regarding the exponential price increase over the original Lime SDR Mini. I've seen a few Reddit threads and Twitter posts complaining about this. The original Lime SDR Mini was sold for $124 US dollars and early supporters of the project scored them for only $99 US dollars. Its successor on the other hand is a whopping $399. This 221% markup in price equates to about 275 US dollars, with the only difference being the FPGA chip. But anyway, that's all the disadvantages of this SDR in my opinion. Despite all the negativity, I truly believe that the advantages of this SDR outweigh the disadvantages. I'm thoroughly enjoying my Lime SDR Mini 2 and have been using it nearly every day since it was delivered to me. So, like in my previous review video, we are going to do a live demonstration of the Lime SDR Mini 2 running a GSM cellular base station using Osmo NITB scripts on Dragon OS. And I'll make a quick voice call between the two Android phones to demonstrate that this is working. So what I'll proceed to do now is I will attach two quad band cellular antennas to the RX and TX ports and also attach my USB patch cable that is connected to my wife's laptop running Dragon OS via bootable USB. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. And then we will go ahead and attach our USB patch cable. So 
So now I'll just switch to a different screen now. And I'll run this command to initiate the Osmo BTS 2G base station. So now that that's running successfully, I now need to, and you can see some activity lights beginning to show on, on the Lime SDR Mini 2 board. So that's a really nice feature. And now I'm going to have to exit the camera program on this phone because it's also the second handset that I'll be using for this demo. Okay, so we have our two phones ready to go. So what I'll proceed to do is It's supposed to be on flight mode already, but we'll just put it back on flight mode and then turn off flight mode and hopefully that should initiate the connection process to the base station. And we can see in our list here, we have an allocation of an IMSI and a TIMSI and a welcome message. So that's really nice. Now we'll do the same to the second phone. Turn it off flight mode. Give it a moment to connect to the base station. And we can see there's been an IMSI attached and a TIMSI. And we have the phone numbers of the phone here too. And the welcome message. So that's really nice. So next thing I'll do now is I will call the number of 127 and we should be able to initiate a phone call between these two handsets. So let's let's go. And there we go. We have a base station running right now, and it's really noisy. So there we go. That is our base station running on a Lime SDR Mini 2.0. So yeah, that's really, really nice. See if I can turn the volume up a little bit and you can hear the echo. Yep, there we go. So yeah, what I'll do, proceed to do now is disconnect the phones and then we will do summing up. So summing up now, the Lime SDR Mini 2 is a good software defined radio and would make a great first step into the world of full duplex transmit capable SDRs. It has good software support on Linux and has quite a lot of useful features packed into its tiny form factor. Although the expensive price might prevent a typical SDR enthusiast or ham radio operator from purchasing one. So that's all I have for today's SDR review. I um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, some viewers on my channel may have noticed recently a steep reduction in, f in the frequency of video content being posted lately. I've got a lot of big things happening in my life currently, and once those are completed and behind me, I will go back to making awesome video content for you all. So, yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.